Live and direct with another edition of what we call Fusion Radio. It's Brian Stinson, it's YTS Keys, and uh, man, I got somebody real special in the building. You know, we always celebrate people, but this one right here is special because he's spending a portion of his birthday with us today, man. And uh, man, that's really dope, man. I uh, learned today, man, that today is his birthday. We was talking in the studio and asked him how old he was, and he told me that he's getting old now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What am I talking about, man? It's a brother, man. Super talented, man. Photographer and model, man. And got a lot of other things uh, that he's double dabbling in. His name is uh, Robert Christian, man. Welcome to Fusion Radio, family. I definitely appreciate that, man. Definitely. No doubt, man. Happy birthday to you, man. I definitely appreciate that. I feel, feel like I'm getting old now. All right, so, man, uh, if you don't feel like like saying it, uh, it's understood, man. I'm putting you on the spot, man. So for the people that's, that's listening, for the people that's viewing and everything, man, uh, how old did you make today? I just turned 27 today. So 27. So those that's listening, somebody going to say, man, he ain't old. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people my age going to say otherwise. <laughs> it's all good, man. I was having a conversation that Keith was educating me on once you hit 35. That's when you're you're definitely in that old age yeah my book once you hit 35 it's over like you might as well i want to say it's over but it's like you super grown at that point like it's, it's over like you're not necessarily young no more when you hit 35 like that's when you start getting to that point where if you ain't already on a certain type of time you start transitioning to a different type of time so I, that's I, what i said i feel the same way because it feel like you getting close to that retirement age well, you supposed to be laying back, like, relaxing and stuff. So back when, like, during this time when you in your mid to early 20s, that's, like, your prime stage to where you can give it your all. But once you get past that, it's just, like, you done ran out of all your energy. So, man, we mentioned, man, that, uh, man, you're really dope at photography and everything, man. What actually sparked your interest in, in photography? Um, I was modeling a couple of years ago. Um, I started modeling after I was on TV. I was on Catfish a couple of years ago. And then after that, uh, I was I had a couple photographers and models hit my line. And then we had started working. And then I wanted to be not just a model, but I wanted to understand like the other side of the camera too. So let's stay there for a second. Since modeling came first before photography, and then we'll come back to uh, photography and everything, man. Uh, Tell us, man, your experience as far as being a model, like, you know, the types of modeling work that you've done um, in the past. I've done basically everything but nude. <laughs> so I don't do none of that. Like, I'm open to work with anybody, do anything. But when it comes to, like, any type of explicit work, that's where I draw the line at. But I've worked with a lot of models and photographers, and they became good friends and mentors as well. So, like... I'm not really familiar with the modeling world and stuff like that. So, like, for the people that's like me, how is the, like, the modeling scene, like, actually, but in Chicago, but just in general? Um, it's, it could be, it can go any way, really. Like, you'll run into people that have, like, a real genuine connection. Some people that just want to put their foot in the door. You'll run into people to where it's, like, they know a lot they'll be able to teach you a lot like i only been doing i i haven't took like I, I wanted to do modeling seriously but i had stopped doing that because it was just like now every day you see everybody that want to become a model nowadays so it's like you just making your competition it, like if somebody was just to try to search up chicago everybody want to do it or whatever city that you in so it was just like i was trying to make myself stand out but like coming across people it was just like you'll I'll ask questions along the way. Like, I was nervous for my first photo shoot. I didn't know what to do. But then over time, you just learn to just relax and then just understand what you're aiming for when you go in front of that camera. So I want to go back a little bit to, like, speak on this 27-year uh, year. So what well, you just turned 27, though. So that means you've been here for a minute. Like, you didn't you didn't have a chance to experience some things. That had. Now, you probably didn't experience everything, but you didn't experience some things out through your years. So, like, give us some advice just in general 
just being out here, like your daily bread, you feel me, doing what you're doing, like just the certain things that you done learned down here, like give us a piece of advice just in life in general, and then get a people a piece of advice that you would give somebody that's trying to do what you do as far as like being a model and stuff. Overall, I just, whether I've done it before or not, I just want to, uh, I'm teaching myself to be more open to try new things out. And then if I don't know anything about it, you may come across somebody that do know something about it. So you ask questions, always ask questions. Because whether you look up to them or not, or whether they may be good at it or bad at it, they are gonna teach you something that you may not know nothing about. So like, for example, it's like, I'm also trying to learn how to do video, video I'm trying to become a videographer as well. I don't know nothing about that, but I'm learning. I'm looking up videos, I'm asking questions. And that's the best thing, that's the best advice I could possibly give. It's just always ask questions and always ever keep your mouth closed about it. For sure. So, like, with me being an artist, I know, like, when it comes to doing things like setting up events or, like, setting up shows, like, we work with different promoters or, like, different people like that or, like, just different connections and stuff like that. So, when it comes to being a model, who do you necessarily have to turn to or who do you need to get in contact with if you're trying to set up certain type of events or be a part of certain type of events? I'm looking, I look for people that have ambition and that have that drive the same way I do. Because some people may look at it for the money, some people may look at it for the clout, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, it's just about how hard you want this to be a success for you. Like some people want to do work just to get over on people. Some people just care about the money, just hurry up, get the work over and out with. But majority of the time when I do my work and when I try to, when I work with other people, it's all genuine. It's just like, I'm actually, we both driving for the same thing. So. So like, what certain events or like certain projects that you've been a part of as far as like modeling that you remember or that really stood out to you and it's like, yeah, this was some of my good work or this was like this was something I really liked to, to be a part of. Um, I have my mentor. Uh, he's all the way out in um, LA. His name is Mastermind. He has showed me a lot for what I had learned. Without him I I, I would have been still struggling with the camera work and editing or what I do or even modeling. He has showed me a lot to where it's like everything of what he does is like I wanted to do it the same way, but in my own way. Everybody, I was shot, just, but I just wanted to make my own, perfect my own craft. If you do know what I'm saying, like. Mm. So yeah, let's transition over to like being a photo, uh, like taking pictures and stuff like that. So like, I know, I know it, a lot of times. Well, from my knowledge, you feel me? When you are taking pictures and stuff like that, yeah, you have to take the picture a certain type of way but like how much does like the actual camera play in like like into that though like does it really matter what kind of camera you got or is it all really based on like how you actually it, take the picture it it all depends i had to learn that for myself because i just went and bought i used to just go out and buy stuff without doing my research on it and i learned that the hard way by spending so much money on little things and then not knowing nothing about it but then over time, it was just like, if you really want to do this, you're going to do your research on it. You gonna, But all of that stuff plays a big part depending on how good you want your work to be. Like, when I had got into uh, becoming a photographer myself, I didn't realize how expensive this stuff was. So it's like, you got to make this like, a, a, you got to, if you want this to be your income, then you have to apply full force on it. And with all of that being said, it was just like, you got to do what you got to do. Just do your research. And if you want that to happen, then make it happen. So depending on the work or what you were trying to, or, or what you're trying to put out. Some people just do it for fun. And some people take this stuff, take this stuff seriously. So. It's Fusion Radio, Brian Stinson, and uh, the homie Keith, man, in here, man, uh, along with our super talented birthday boy, a.k.a. photographer slash model man <laughs> robert uh christian man you know i got this thing i know you don't know it, but i got this thing where i love when we get a chance to talk about the slashers who do we what do we mean by the slashers and you're gonna laugh when i say this is the people that have multiple things that they do that's dope that's a new thing that i yeah. call them. i call them the slashers 
I never heard that before. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's something new. That's something new, man. I, like we're fortunate to, you know, the time that we've been uh, doing the show, man, is that, man, we have a lot of people that they're just really talented and in so many different areas. And I was just sitting here and I'm like, sometimes when I introduce them, I have to let people know, like, man, look, it sounds like it's a long intro, but it's really, I got to encompass everything <laughs> and talk yeah, about everything that, that they yeah. do and all that stuff. So I want to stay on topic with the photography and everything, man. Like, take us through your actual process with that. Um, there's some other things I want to talk about that when it comes to dealing with clients and all that stuff. But take us through your process. Uh, when I always promote myself, whether it's through business cards, social media, in person, at work, to family members, friends, however. Yeah, I do it anyway just to try to get my name out. That's what had got me into the position of what I was in when I first started modeling. When I was on TV, I needed the exposure for myself. When I first got the exposure, I had got clientele, I had got the clout of what I had did, or the fan base of what I had on Instagram or on social media. So I was trying to do the same thing for me being, being a photographer. No doubt. So I want to build on that and take us here, man. Like, of course, you being a photographer and all that stuff, you have clients and, you know, there's certain uh, things that they're looking to get out of the photos and all that stuff, man. Like, what's some things that you do to make them more relaxed so you can accomplish what they set out to from the beginning when they um, mention that to you? I run into a lot of nervous clients or first-time clients to where they don't know what to do. But I always play throwback music. I always play throwback music. It always helps people because it's like when you do it like on, on Sundays when you're cleaning up in your house, you, get, you just get in your groove, just be yourself in front of the camera. That's what I always try to encourage my clients to do. It's just that's all I listen to as well. I always listen to just throwback music. So I find that the easiest way for me to try to ease their mind throughout the whole process while we taking our why we doing our session or taking pictures let's build on that i want to hear first since you the birthday boy today man yeah give me some of your favorite throwbacks and then we gonna go to some ones that make them feel comfortable meeting the client um i listen my i i have like a large variety of throwback artists like right now i'm constantly listening to like wu-tang clan right now that's why when you was talking about it earlier like the red the method man and red man it, i was stuck on that so I was really, I listened to that. I listened to Tupac. I listened to, um, I listened to old R&B music too as well. Like I'm listening to the whispers, the old throwback music. So <laughs> it just goes, it just goes many ways with my music, my taste in music. And then client, give me something that you play for a client that made them feel relaxed and you guys were able to accomplish, um, you know, the goal when it came to what they wanted to come out with as far as their photos. I play like early 90s or early 2000s, like R&B music, like, mm -hmm. for, like early Chris Brown or like oh, some Omarion, Usher, like get some R&B music just to get the music flowing into their body, like just something to ease their mind so they feel more relaxed. So one thing you wanted to talk to us about is about this appearance on <laughs> so with you doing what you do i want i was curious to like understand what was your whole like role in that episode though like so what was going on to be honest i didn't know anything about it until like because at the time i was i was in, in, in i was in jail at the time so they when i had got out a producer on twitter had hit me up and i thought it was something fake but i was just going along with it and we had had a conversation. She had asked to Skype. And then um, afterwards, we Skyped. She showed me the whole production studio in Cali. And then she said, somebody's using your pictures and all that. I'm like, this can't even be real right now. I didn't think it was real. But the whole time, it was, they had FaceTimed me. They had told me that somebody was using my pictures. And then they tried offering me money. But I wanted the exposure instead. So that's how... All of that had happened. They had said my my Instagram platform, my platform on Instagram, and then that's how it went away, or that's how I got started. No, 
You know what's so crazy about how you just described that? I didn't see the episode like that. Like just you know how you be watching TV. And yeah. I didn't like I didn't watch Catfish <laughs> before, and it was a female that was on there, and she wasn't necessarily on the episode, but she like was on there just like how you said like somebody was using her pictures online to catfish somebody else, and they end up doing their research and end up getting in tune with her and did the same thing like they they skyped and told her like you know somebody else using <laughs> yeah. your pictures and stuff like that. So that's crazy though, like, but like, like just to bounce off that, like, do how do you feel about that though? Like, well, how did you feel in the moment? Like, did you feel like disgusted that somebody was like, using your pictures for their personal gain, or did you kind of like, no, I like, actually feel flattered by it in some type of way? I ain't even gonna lie, I try to promote it. <laughs> like, <laughs> if they needed more pictures and stuff, I was gonna send it to the catfish if they needed them. Like, I know there's still pages out there that still do this crazy stuff. But I was actually promoting it because it got me to where I was at before. So what are the chances of it trying to happen again? So you never know. Exactly. So people just be having crazy stories with these catfish pages. Also, also, I want to talk to you about you being a father too, though, and you're a father of three. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> and it's not not like not yeah. crazy that you're a father of three, but it's like. Okay, like we first we started out talking about how you just turned twenty seven. Then we found out that you were a father of three, and like, if we just gonna keep it a hundred, just like raising one kid is a lot. So you having three at twenty seven is like, <laughs> that's a lot right there. So like, just talk to me about that doing like your oh bundles of joy, and like how they affect your life and stuff like that. Oh my god, my kids, like I thought that waiting. For you to finally see your child come into this world was patience, but when they're actually here and after they're here, when they're growing up, that's where you actually have to teach yourself patience throughout that whole process mm -hmm. as they're growing up. Like my kids, they're my world. I brag about them, I talk about them, I show pictures, everything. I love each one of them. Like I didn't plan for all of this to happen, for me to have three kids so soon, like back to back to back, because they're not that far apart in age, but at the same time, I'm not going to turn down my kids. Oh, no, for sure. They're, they're still my kids. So I'm doing everything I can to show them that you can do what you want without trying to punch in and out, hurting, like just taking a toll on your body just to try to make a a, a living in this world. So mm. I mean, I'm hustling. I'm just trying to, now is the time, even though that I'm at the age that I'm at, I finally realized that I'm not going to waste any more time just playing around. When I got kids, I got to provide for. So. So what you got, boys, girl? I got one girl and two boys. My daughter's name is Farai, and both of my sons' name is Pierre and Casey. Mm. Who's the oldest? Huh? The oldest. Uh, my daughter. My daughter, she'll be four this year. Mm. And then my, both my sons, they'll be, my son turned two, and then my youngest turned two later on this year. That's crazy. He had a girl for his first one. I you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I was, I that that was a long process for me itself, because when I got the news, this was like during COVID. So at the time, the mother of my kids, she was the only one allowed to in the building. So she came back outside with a the little sonogram picture in an envelope, and I opened it up. It had a blue sticky note. I'm thinking it was a boy, cause it had a blue sticky note. I opened it up, and it was just pointing right at herself, saying, "You're having a girl." It took me months to try to let this just to sit it, sink in. Like, like when you hear for the first time, you gotta go so go buy stuff for your daughter. I'm just like, wow, this is. I've been all my life without any kids, and now I'm hearing this for the first time. So, it's crazy. Man, Brody, man, I enjoy every bit of this conversation, man. And I just, you know, as I sit and I look, man. Um, I believe there was so much that was shared um, in this conversation. I believe, man, that, you know, like I say to so many of my, my, my youngins, man, and everything, man, like um, your story in the way that you painted it and everything um, is one that can be an inspiration to so many other people, man. Um, and so, man, appreciate you definitely for coming down, man. Uh, definitely, man, shout out your social media uh, shout out your website where people can go check out your work and all that stuff, man. And, um, you know, definitely, man, um, once again, man, happy birthday to you, man. I Thank you for, for coming in and, and spending. I definitely appreciate that. Um, again, I don't feel like I'm getting any younger right now. I feel like I'm just getting older as time goes, day by day. But my 
Instagram is Robert Christian B. And the same as my Facebook and anything else that you try to search it on. All right. And then shout out your website, man, because you got a lot of dope information on that website. Uh, my website is by robertchristianb.com. No doubt. Find, see my portfolio, see my life on there. You can see basically anything you need to right there. Well, Brody, man, definitely continue success, man, on all that you're doing, man. And, uh, man, once again, man, we appreciate you, man, for uh, taking a little time out of that birthday. Come and spend it with us, man. I definitely appreciate that, man.